welcome to Book Day number five. Today is all about those icy fae romances, the cozy contemporary Christmas holiday, tree farm books, and anything else that screams December, okay? That's what this video is. It originally started off as a reading vlog like a month ago around Thanksgiving because I was like, you know what, Regan, it's time for me to try to become a contemporary Christmas romance girly because I want to be a part of that crew. I want to be able to talk about all these romance books. But you know what? I picked up A Holly Jolly Ever After by Julie Murphy and Sarah Simone. Sarah Simone wrote Priest, which I love. And like, it's fun. I'm a third of the way through it, but it's taking me like a month and I'm bored. And then I picked up Love Light Farms, which everyone is raving about, but I just, I'm not in the mood for it. And I just had to be honest with myself and say, you know what, Reagan, you need a enemies to lovers, slow burn, fey, winter romance. And so my lovely husband kindly gifted me an early Christmas present. I love you, baby, thank you so much. And that would be Court of Winter, which is book one of a fey, of Snow and Ice, that's a mouthful, by Krista Street. Um, I accidentally wrote the whole thing and I didn't vlog it. <laughs> I finished it last night on my reading live sprints that I do every Sunday. And it's such a fun time. It's exactly what I said it was. It's definitely uh, like obvious and a bit repetitive and like there's not as much world building as I would like. And like the main character is like dumb, you know, but like, it's so much fun. This is the book to read when you have a hot chocolate. Hello, here's mine. It's the hazelnut one from Starbucks, a little bit of coffee in it. And you have an afternoon, just read this December, like pick this one up. I loved it. I want to read book two. It's not a perfect book. Like it's probably a 3.75 stars, but you know, I had a five star time reading it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, today I'm continuing on and I'm going to start for the Wolf by Hannah Witten. And I do have the sequel for the throne. Today is my first ever all day reading sprint and I'm doing it live on YouTube. I'm a bit nervous about it. I don't know if I'm gonna do a public big sprint like this again. I'll probably have to do like a members situation because I'm just nervous about like crazy people coming onto the internet and like, derailing the whole live stream. Maybe I'm just being anxious. Probably no one even knows that I'm doing this. Maybe only two people will turn up, but like in my head, I'm like, oh my God, what if something goes wrong? What if, you know, I don't know. But anyway, I'm getting off point here. I am picking up For the Wolf. This is, I don't really know. <laughs> is it Little Red Riding Hood or is it Beauty and the Beast? I know it's dark and atmospheric. I know that it's very cozy. I, I, I don't know, I don't know. But I've been told by you, several of you, persistently to read this book. And I was like, you know what? I might as well do it in this all day reading sprint that I've got going on today. So that's the plan. So yeah, we'll see how many books I can finish in the next few days before the end of Bookmas. All right, 10 minutes to go. Got my coffee hot chocolate still, my books and accessories, I think. I'm ready to go. Okay, it is like 6.30, so I'm in the middle of sprinting. I've been at it for three and a half hours. I'm on the second cup of coffee that I don't like, but you know, it's getting me through the night. And I am reading rather slowly. I'm on, page 100 of For the Wolf. And this is so good. It's so intriguing. It's very mm, grim fairy tale, like kind of grotesque. The characters are really well balanced so far. We have two sisters. We have the first daughter and the second daughter. They're twins. The first daughter is meant to be queen for the throne, which is book two. I know that's the title. And then the second daughter is for the wolf. So we're following Red, short for Raderis, and she is sacrificed to the wolf to like appease these gods, to bring these gods back. And, and like the forest is cursed and evil and it will kill her. And I am enjoying it. I find it very captivating. However, it's like hard to imagine. It's so descriptive and so specific and there's not a map, even though she's talking about continents and countries. And I don't know, I find it kind of heavy to read at the moment. So I'm going to pause and go back to House of Founding Hearts. But just a quick update, very much enjoying this. It's cold. It's not exactly snowy, but like 
it's it's a winter just day book you know what i mean i've got my thai rice making a good progress in both books this is just literally the best way to spend a monday so much fun last night on our first ever all day reading sprints like literally nine hours some of you read with me for nine hours that is iconic i am so excited and happy that we did that we have to do it again at some point i didn't end up reading this book as much as i thought i would i only read just over 100 pages it's very good the writing style is beautiful like i said but it feels quite dense and like brainy in a sense that like I really need to concentrate on piecing together what's going on because this magical forest is very complex so I ended up actually making a huge dent in House of Pounding Hearts which is not a part of this Christmassy snowy vibe of a video because that is not this book so I do need to continue on today with For the Wolf and then I'm thinking of maybe picking up my Nutcracker retelling possibly we'll see how tonight goes Good morning. Um, we need to go grab a coffee. I feel like this is the worst reading vlog I've ever done because I haven't really done much reading in this vlog. I do want to tell you though um, about the book that I finished first and that is Court of Winter by Krista Street. This is book one in a new Fae series that takes place in her supernatural world. I had never heard of this author but it's like so complex. In the beginning, she has a like breakdown of things in this world. She has a map. She has how you say the characters' names. She has um, a glossary, pronunciation guide. Like it's so interesting. It's about this girl named Delara, and basically she is defected. She lives in this land of Fae with all these different kind of races of Fae, and they all have wings. She doesn't have any wings, so she's a defected. And then on top of that, while everyone in her world has silver hair, hers is black, so she's basically shunned. She's the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. She like works the farmlands. She has a talent for like helping crops grow and basically the world is starving so when the prince comes across her and this is someone that she absolutely hates because he murdered her mother and her brother she is terrified he takes her prisoner and locks her away in his room and then basically like disappears and she's like well, where has he gone and she's frightened of him but at the same time he he's like you know, he's bad, but like morally gray, you know what I mean? So there's some, um, a start of an enemies to lovers situationship going on in this book. It ends on a cliffhanger. I will definitely continue on with the series. It's not the best writing I've ever read, but it's certainly such a fun time. And I definitely want to check out more within this world. So if you're looking for a wintry fae romance book, Hello, here's one. I highly recommend it. Okay, we need to talk about the only true Christmas book that I've read. And I didn't vlog any of this either because I was reading it on my phone, just traveling to and from work over the last couple of weeks. And then it got really boring, so I kind of set it aside. I went back to it last night. I decided to DNF it at 50%. So literally the halfway mark, I just couldn't continue on I decided to look up spoilers instead to find out what happened and then I like skimmed through the rest of the chapters and I don't feel like I missed out on anything but that would be A Holly Jolly Ever After by Sierra Simone and Julie Murphy I love Sierra Simone she wrote Priest which is the first taboo romance that I've ever read the only taboo romance I've ever read and I can see her writing in this like um she basically was following this woman who was a child actress 
very famous um, and starred in all of these like picture Hallmark, but it's not Hallmark. It's like the Hallmark channel. She did all of the sweet Christmas movies. She starred in all of the like Christian romance movies. She's very big in the Christian uh, community and, and I, I don't really know how to say it, but like she's famous, you know what I mean? She's gonna talk to talk shows and stuff, but she ends up getting divorced from her husband. She's like 30, 31 maybe in this book and it's this huge scandal and she decides to like kind of reclaim herself to star in the first ever movie that this Hallmark-esque channel is making which is like Hallmark After Dark adult movies but still Christmassy and fun which I loved that premise. I really liked how the authors explored her coming into like be comfortable with herself. There's lots of exploration following like a very strict traumatic upbringing and she's able to not feel so guilty for wanting things that she was told growing up she could never want. There's definitely a look into how religion can affect one's upbringing and the way that they view themselves and I thought that that exploration was really done, well done. I will say that the main character is pretty naive for being over 30 years old but that isn't to say that someone growing up in a very like cloistered religious environment wouldn't also be this way you know maybe she like just maybe that really is true for some people so i i really liked the beginning of it but then it just like got dragged out it was too long it was redundant it was just like steamy scene after steamy scene because she was like trying all these new things i'm like yeah we get it and then um I won't say what the the trope is, but it is a spoiler. So I'm gonna count to five and you can fast forward to this time on the screen so you can avoid the spoiler. Okay, are we good? So um, it's a surprise pregnancy between her and the guy that she's co-starring with. And like, I don't mind surprise pregnancies in books. I've actually never come across one and I wouldn't mind that happening in any of my like fantasy romance books, but it was the way in which it was used as a plot device. Like I feel like it should have been something special at the end of the book rather than what drives the entire second half of the book. Like literally part two is just like all about this, you know, accidental pregnancy and it just didn't feel like necessary. I feel like they should have, obviously I didn't continue reading it. Like I said, I did DNF it, but I feel like it should have explored more about her personal growth and her personal journey and like some more of the fun drama behind the scenes making this adult Christmas movie about Santa Claus, like a young Santa Claus. Anyway, that's my hot take on a very holly jolly ever after, whatever it's called. I also picked up on my iPhone A Risk Worth Taking, which is a new Christmas novella by Jessica Joyce. Jessica Joyce wrote um, You With A View, which I read earlier this year. She might be my favorite contemporary romance author. I've only read like maybe five, like maybe five <laughs> contemporary authors, but she's, she's so good. And this novella is perfect. I think this is what I prefer maybe contemporary romances like are just dragged out too long for me they're not like action-packed and super exciting like fantasy books in my opinion so i need the romance to be really well done and i need it to like all the all of the miscommunications and third acts and stuff i need it to like make sense and a risk worth taking was perfect because it was short it was like less than 100 pages it's about this girl i think she's in boston and she's just had just everything is just like not going her way. So she decides um, at like a, I think it's a Christmas party or is it a New Year's party? I don't know. On the cover, there's like a Christmas tree, but it's not like a surrounding Christmas. It's just like that time of year. Anyway, she's working this like exclusive party and she meets someone who's attending the party she and him go back to his place they have a, a great one night stand and they like very much connect like you know when you meet someone and you're like oh my gosh i i could date you like you're amazing but she's leaving 
the next day but a snowstorm rolls in and then she has to stay at his place and they just have like the best time just a few days together and then she leaves and there's a really nice sweet ending i thought it was very realistic yeah just it, it just felt normal it felt like something that would and could happen and does happen to people like when you meet someone it's just like it's not the right time but maybe they show up later in your life and you can explore that with them um i thought the romance was great i thought the everything was perfectly paced so i definitely recommend this novella okay so i have completed one book one novella dnf the book and i'm currently in the middle of for the wolf i won't be able to finish this book before this vlog vlog slash review video because i don't really vlog anything goes out to you i put this down last night at page 132 i just wasn't in the mood to keep going i wanted to keep reading a, a steamy fantasy romance that i'm currently in the middle of and try to like finish it um i am still liking this but i'm struggling to understand the complexities of this magical evil forest and I don't know if I'm just being a little bit dumb because the writing is great. The characters are very interesting, but I'm like not fully maybe understanding what's happening or I'm just, my brain is just in Christmas mode and I'm ready to just like go do Christmas things and I'm just not in the mood to sit down and just like really sink my teeth into this book. But a few of you have like personally messaged me and told me that it's your favorite book, your favorite series of all time. Like I need to read it and I do have a sequel and apparently the sequel is very good. I like the all the characters. I particularly like these twin sisters that they follow. So you follow Neve and you follow Red. It's like, it's kind of, I don't know if I said this before, but it's like kind of weird but it's like a good weird. It's it's definitely atmospheric and has a gothic, creepy, grim brothers vibe to it. Have I said this before? I might be repeating myself, but it's good. So I will continue on. We're getting to a part where like maybe there's going to have some kind of arranged marriage trope, which I'm all about. I did message um my friend Brittany from Brittany Allen's channel I'll link her down below because she's someone who said like I absolutely have to read this book and I was like I need more romance and she said that it's it's like coming it's like maybe a little bit more slow burn and I think book two is going to be even better than book one so anyway that is it <laughs> for this video <laughs> I'm sorry this video sucked so much I'm I am sorry Tell me what wintry, Christmassy books you are reading this holiday season. I really tried with the Christmas contemporary books, okay? But the Icy Fae have my heart, like murder my family, have wings, I still love you, you know, that kind of vibe. <laughs> Anyway, tomorrow's video is me reacting to your favorite books of the year and your biggest disappointments. There were a couple surprises in there. I was very um, interested to see all of your submissions. So be sure to check that video out and I will see you yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye guys.